I've been very concerned lately about China and sort of their, we have transferred so much money from our economy over to China by buying all those things and supporting their economy over there so they could make more and more money. They are now all over Africa, you know, buying things and investing over there and getting those countries dependent on them and supporting, you know, non-democratic people. And I'm just Like whom? Well. We come, we are in a country that supports Saudi Arabia. Yes, that's yeah? true. Right. So, so suddenly we have a problem with, uh, you know, superpowers supporting non-democratic people? <laughs> yes. I mean, yes, I do. But I also am just concerned that we've sort of created the economic power that China sort of has now. And they're using it, I fear, going to be using it against us eventually and against the better interests well, of a lot of people. Allow me to put your mind to rest. Okay. Great. You, you, you shouldn't worry about that. Okay. It's very simple. <laughs> and let me explain why you shouldn't worry about it. But please continue. Well, I mean, they're, you know, they're, they're in Africa. They're, they're lending money to countries to build ports and different infrastructure. To build what? Port And harbors. what's wrong with that? And, well, because... Countries that need ports get ports. But they're making people dependent on... I mean, I know, it's the same thing that we've done, which is no, it's not. all around the world. They are, they are far more humanistic than the United States ever was. <laughs> really? Okay. Absolutely. Great. So... Let me give, give you an okay. example. Of course they're trying... They are peddling for, in, for, for influence. Yeah. Yeah? Uh, but they are non-interventionist. Absolutely non-interventionist in a way that Europeans, the West, has never managed to fathom. But I, I have a feeling they have a longer-term... Th thought process that's, ah, okay. that is more right, interventionist. Right, right. But, but, but anyway, let's judge what so, we no. see. Let's okay. judge what you okay. well, let, Let's start at the, at the beginning. The Chinese never asked Apple to go to Shenzhen and produce all the iPhones. It was um, Steve Jobs that decided that. Yeah? Mm -hmm. uh, the, it was not China that um, uh, went to Washington DC and demanded that they buy a third of your national debt. If they hadn't bought it, you would be in serious trouble. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, number three. I did allude to this in my talk. If in 2008 China had not cranked up their credit bubble, you would be in, the great, in, a, in a new Great Depression now. Mm -hmm. So, China, the United States, and the European Union are absolutely synergistic. Uh, synergistic, and they need one another in a way that if we fail to acknowledge and to nurture uh, billions of people, including the majority of the people in this country, are going to suffer. Now, I am not going to sit here, uh, stand here, and um, defend China and the Chinese Communist Party. I already made some negative remarks about the Chinese Communist Party. In, in referring to, you know, mm -hmm. their attitudes as being uh, compatible with those of Wolfgang Schäuble. My concern about China is the authoritarian manner in which the Chinese regime is treating the Chinese people. As a Democrat, I have a problem with this. Mind you, I have to tell you that, from my understanding of China, there is a very, it's a very interesting social experiment in the sense that at the local level, the regional level, you now have a boisterous democracy. At the local and regional level. Eh? With, even with uh, uh, popular success stories in overthrowing local uh, authorities, local bureaucrats who have been corrupt, who have been this, who have been that, who have been the other. When it comes to the influence of China outside its borders, I have to say, firstly, it's quite remarkable that they don't seem to have any military um, ambitions. Secondly, Africa. I'll give you an example, a specific example, Ethiopia. 2004, because it ha happened to be there, and I, I have some uh, first-person, first-hand experience of it, 
They went into Ethiopia. I'll tell you why they went into Ethiopia, because they suspected there was oil. <laughs> because China is a major industrial power, but it lacks primary resources. Now, instead of going into Africa with troops, colonially, destroying the country, killing people like the West has done for the last hundred years, what they did was they went to Addis Ababa and they said to the government, we would like, and we can see you have problem, problems with your infrastructure, we would like to build some new airports, um, upgrade your railway system, create a telephone system, and rebuild your roads. And we'll do this all, all for free. No strings attached. We don't want anything from you. And they did. Why did they do it? Because it's soft power. Because they, now, it, because they knew that if oil is uh, uh, discovered, and it was discovered later, then, of course, the Ethiopian government will be much more open to Chinese oil companies coming there. They have never combined their investment with imperialistic... Uh, I, 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 you know, when I was Minister of Finance, I had a, a very interesting ex experience with Costco, one of the Chinese national companies that, in the end, bought the port of Piraeus. Uh, when, 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 I, when, when I moved into the ministry, I found a contract from the previous government that they had already sold the port of Piraeus for a pittance and other ridiculous conditions to the Chinese uh, under the guidance, of course, of the European Union and the International Monetary Fund as well. And in other words, I was, as a minister, I was uh, bound to a particular deal that was terrible for Greece. And I went to the Chinese and discussed this, it with them. And I was really astonished. I said to them, look, you're paying too little. You're not committing to a sufficient level of investment. And you are treating our workers as fodder. Uh, you are effectively subcontracting labor to horrible companies that exploit the workers. And I can't deal with this. And effectively, I proposed to them we, to renegotiate the contract, so instead of getting 67% of the shares of the port, they would get with the same price, 51. The remaining shares would go into uh, the Greek pension fund system in order to bolster the capitalization of the public pensions. Secondly, I want you to commit to 180 million euros of investment within 12 months. And thirdly, proper collective bargaining with the trade unions and no subcontracting of labor. And to my astonishment, they said, okay. <laughs> Can you imagine if that was a German company or an American company? <laughs> That's why I'm saying I don't think you should worry. Okay.